from mysterious disappearances to incredible stories. These are five lost ships and planes. Number five, Stardust, Argentina. Stardust, a British South American Airways airliner, crashed somewhere around Mount Tupungato in the Argentine Andes on August 2nd, 1947, while flying from Buenos Aires, Argentina to Santiago, Chile. Despite an exhaustive search encompassing the crash site, the wreckage was not found, and the fate of the plane and its occupants remained unknown for decades, giving birth to different conspiracy theories surrounding their disappearance. The last contact received by a Chilean Air Force operator was the mysterious message, ETA Santiago 1745 hours, Stendek. This perplexed investigators and air traffic control centers alike. The air traffic controller requested clarification and heard Stendek repeated twice in succession before contact with the aircraft was lost. Yeah, seriously, I'm perplexed too. The pilot sent a message saying they were only minutes away from the airport and somehow slammed the airplane into a volcano mere seconds later. Also, what does Stendek even mean? Remnants of the wreckage were finally discovered in the Andes Mountains almost 50 years later by two Argentinian mountaineers. Evidence suggests the plane flew into a nearly vertical snowfield at the top of the glacier, causing an avalanche to bury it in place. Despite tales ranging from alien abduction to Nazi spies and stolen gold, a thorough investigation revealed that the accident was caused by bad weather and that the most likely meaning of the bizarre communication was based on a World War II code deciphered as Severe Turbulence Encountered, Now Descending, Emergency Crash Landing. But there's still doubt in the meaning of it. This is just an educated guess. Number 4. Airship America south of Nova Scotia. The America was a non-rigid airship built in 1906 in France by Moutin Godard for journalist Walter Wellman's attempt to fly to the North Pole. During a failed polar effort by boat and sled from Svalbard in 1894, Wellman had an idea of utilizing a balloon to travel to the pole. Eventually, the Wellman Chicago Record Herald Polar Expedition was real after Wellman secured support from publisher Victor F. Lawson. Meanwhile, a public company was formed to fund the required $250,000 or so for the voyage and airship. After two unsuccessful attempts to begin the expedition to the North Pole, the America had to be taken back to France for repairs, and on August 15th at 10 a.m., America launched with Wellman as captain and a crew of three, or four, if you count Kiddo, the cat mascot of America. The flight started off properly, but two hours and 40 miles later, a mechanism Walter Wellman referred to as the equilibrator failed. They somehow managed to escape disaster one more time. Three failures and claims of Frederick Cook and Robert Peary reaching the North Pole discouraged Wellman. He gave up the idea of flying there and instead focused on being the first man to fly over the Atlantic Ocean. On October 15, 1910, the airship took off from Atlantic City. Unfortunately, trouble started fairly early in the trip. Within 40 hours, the engines began failing. After another 33 hours and having now traveled a total distance of 1,370 miles, the crew spotted safety in the form of the Royal Mail steamship Trent. They immediately got their attention with Morse code using a signaling lamp. The crew and mascot, let's not forget him, made it to the boat safely, and the airship America drifted out of sight, never to be seen again. Number 3. Lady Be Good, Sahara Desert. The US Air Force B 24D Liberator, nicknamed Lady Be Good, departed the Salak Field Air Base in Libya on April 4, 1943. It was headed towards Naples, Italy for a bombing mission. On the return trip, the plane was spotted flying over the airbase in a massive sandstorm. It wasn't seen again for over 15 years. In 1958, a British petroleum airplane spotted the wreckage during an oil exploration program. The plane was two hours south of their final destination, and efforts to locate remnants of the crew were successful. Co-pilot Robert Toner recorded the grueling plight of his crew in the middle of the colossal sand sea. The eight members survived for eight days on one canteen of water, and managed to walk 81 miles as a team. 
In 1994, Lady Be Good was removed from its resting place and some parts were flown back to the USA. Some of those parts were salvaged and reused in other planes. One C-54 that received transmitters from the crash plane had to throw away its cargo so it could land safely because of issues with its propeller. A C-47 that had a radio receiver from the plane crashed into the Mediterranean. Finally, a DHC-3 Otter crashed in the Gulf of Sidra. One of the few things to wash ashore was the salvaged armrest from the Lady Be Good. Number 2. Lubov Orlova, International Waters Lubov Orlova was named after this famous Russian actress. Built in 1976, the vessel, not the actress, in the USSR. She served as an expedition cruise ship traveling around the Arctic and Antarctica often. In 2010, Lubov Orlova was seized at St. John's Port, Newfoundland because of accrued debts. It stayed at that port for the next two years. And when it was being towed for scrapping to the Dominican Republic, something happened. Not even one day into the journey, the tow lines broke and the ship started drifting away. Due to bad weather, the precise location of the ship was unknown. But incredibly, she was found and captured by a Transport Canada tugboat. They dragged the ship a little farther away to international waters and cut her loose. Why? Because, and I quote, the Lubov Orlova no longer poses a threat to the safety of offshore oil installations, their personnel, or the marine environment. The vessel has drifted into international waters and given current patterns and predominant winds, it is very unlikely that the vessel will re-enter waters under Canadian jurisdiction. It's nice to know that you can just leave your crap in the middle of the ocean. 2013 was the last time Lubov Orlova was spotted, near the coast of Iceland and Ireland. No one knows for sure if this ship will ever be seen again. Chances are, it's somewhere in the dark, cold depths of the Atlantic Ocean. Number 1. Andrea Gale, Sable Island. I am sure Actually, I'm not so sure anymore, it's been a long time, that you have probably heard the story of Andrea Gale. Constructed in Florida in 1978, was a 72-foot commercial fishing vessel owned by Robert Brown. Her home port was Marblehead, Massachusetts, but she also sailed from Gloucester. On September 20th, 1991, unbeknownst to the crew, the Andrea Gale began her final voyage, departing from Gloucester Harbor with a final destination of the Grand Banks of Newfoundland. After some less than stellar fishing days, Captain Frank W. Billy Tyne Jr. decided to head east to the Flemish Cap in hopes of better luck. By October 26th, despite reports of dangerous conditions, Tyne set course for home. Three days into their voyage home, things took a turn for the worst when the crew encountered what was described as the perfect storm. Tyne radioed the Hannah Bowden, the fishing vessel's sister ship, giving her a weather report. At the time, Tyne reported 30-foot waves and wind gusts of 92 miles per hour. On October 3rd, the vessel was reported overdue, and an extensive air and land search was launched. The only thing found was the ship's emergency position indicating radio beacon, which was washed up on the shore of Sable Island in Nova Scotia. On November 9th, 1991, due to the low probability of crew survival, Authorities called off the search for Andrea Gale and her crew. Since then, no new information regarding this case has surfaced. You might like the movie A Perfect Storm, which is based off of this story. Check out the featured comment below, subscribe for more World on Earth, and I'll see you in the next video.